subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Ninja Selling Podcast. We have a guest with us again today. You actually just heard his voice, and he's back. James Mitchell is with us today, and we're going to dive into the funnel process part of the buyer process. We told you guys a few episodes back that we were going to break down certain parts of the, the buyer process, and James happens to be a funnel expert. And James is also a ninja selling coach. He's one of the fabulous coaches, has been a uh, realtor for many, many years at the group in Fort Collins, Colorado. So he has a lot of practice in executing the buyer process and perfecting it along the way with different clients as he's worked with. And that's how he's become the funnel expert, which Garrett happens to be a piece of the buyer process that I see so many people say, yeah, that funnel thing. Right, they, they don't treat it with the respect that I think it deserves, and I think mostly because like I'm gonna draw a funnel in front of my people. So we'll get into those things. And before we dive in, just a quick reminder, guys: if you haven't checked out our podcast community on Facebook, head over to facebook.com/groups/the Ninja Selling Podcast. You can engage with like-minded people who are experienced ninjas, just getting introduced to ninja people who are new to real estate. We also have a bulletin board as the first pinned announcement in that group that will highlight upcoming installations, mastery groups, and more so you can access more of Ninja to help you thrive. So, Garrett, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. And I'm, I'm so happy we're going down this path with James. I've watched him teach the funnel to anybody who's, again, new to this and going, what in the world are these guys talking about this funnel that you know is part of this buyer process? In Ninja, we have an amazing process to help your buyers become buyers, to help you know who you're supposed to be working with. And in there, there's this funnel. And the funnel process is designed to basically take all the properties on the market and help narrow it down so you're only looking at the correct properties. And I find that people are dropping this through this time right now because they're like, what? I'm going to show them, I'm going to draw this funnel and show them that there's no properties on top of the funnel and there's no properties dropping out the bottom of it because there isn't any inventory. And they're like, I'm just going, I'm just going to go and work with them because that's what they need right now. And what we're watching is, and what James and I were talking about before this, which we haven't even let him talk yet. Hello. There you go. Uh, it's so incredibly important right now. And James, thank you for joining us again for more of your time to share this process is really valid right now and very valuable with helping work with people. So good morning, James. Good morning. Great to be here. Great to talk about the funnel, man. The funnel put all three of my children through college and they haven't even started college yet. So I'm grateful to the funnel. That's a really powerful statement. That's awesome. There it is. We could just start with a mic drop right there. So for anybody who's disrespecting the funnel, so to speak, or discounting it, it'll put your kids through college. So James, let's go right into it. Why don't, I mean, you start telling us what is the funnel, first of all, for the people who may not know. So the funnel is one of the steps of the buyer's process, I think like six or seven. And what it is, it's a time for us as the ninja to work with our clients to set their expectations, explain how the process works, educate them on what's going on in the market, set our boundaries as a realtor and about how we work, as well as gets everybody more time because we're going to get this done more efficiently. And by get this done, I mean, get the house bought, sold under contract and successfully closed. This is where we explain and educate the process of buying a property. That's a lot. And I think a lot of people will be like, oh, I didn't realize it was all of that. I thought it was just a thing that we like slid some properties into and hope that something came out the back. So that's a lot of info right there. Let's go into how do you set this up? So there's there's a lot there. So we understand now that's what we're going to try to achieve as a realtor doing this funnel process with a prospective buyer. How do we set it up? And what's the conversation look like with a buyer as we get going down this part of the process? So as we're cruising through the process, we're getting our prior knowledge and understanding and learning about what they're wanting. And then at that very glorious point, you get to ask your clients, would you like to see the process that we use to help you find the right house? And every client goes, yeah, I want to see a process. <laughs> like what you got? 
Then I grab a piece of paper and in my buyer packet and in your buyer packet, if you don't have a buyer packet or know what that is, I'm sure there's a podcast, go find that one. But inside the buyer packet, I always have some wonderful blank pieces of paper, right? Some notes for them, some pieces of paper and notes for me. So I pull out one of those pieces of paper and I draw on there a funnel. And at that point, because I'm a terrible physical drawing artist, I will tell them that this is a funnel. And I'm going to let you know that because I got a real estate degree from Colorado State, not an art degree. So I'm just going to tell you that I drew a funnel. It also kind of looked like a piece from the sorry game if I turned it upside down. One client told me it looked like a fallopian tube. Like I was going to say, this is the tornado. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it looks like. We just have to tell them what it is. So when we draw that funnel, then we get to start working through the process, right? So pop quiz to either one of you. What are the major fears, the four major fears of a buyer? Paying too much. Yep. Missing out on the home. Yep. Uh, picking the wrong house. Yep. Something wrong with it. Missing something. Okay. Paying too much. Buying a lemon, right? So condition, buying something bad. And the last one is losing out on it once they have it, right? So they're under contract and they lose it. And so this funnel is then designed to really help answer and to get in front of those four main fears. And so the first one is missing something. And so when we draw the funnel at the very top of the funnel, this is where we get to have a conversation about inventory. Everybody's favorite conversation right now. So James, here's what I always found was funny when I did the funnel. I would use the entire inventory. Like I would like everybody says there is no inventory and I would be like, oh no, no. And I, I would actually write like 5,000 homes right now. But I took the entire like county. I was like, this is everything I can show you in our county or in our city. Like there is tons of inventory. Still is. Still is. And so that's where we get to have the conversation with our client and, and also like just affirming to them and you're buying a house. I want your mindset to say there is inventory and we're going to find you the right house. When our clients are signed up with that mindset, we're going to go far fast too. We're going to get them what they want. It's going to go smooth with clarity and ease. So when we're in there, we draw the top of the funnel. We say, listen, and you know, you pick it for your market, but these, there's either hundreds or there's thousands of houses for sale in our marketplace at any given moment. Now, what that means right now is that that's not standing inventory. That's fluid inventory. It's coming on the market and it's leaving, but there are still hundreds of homes being listed every single week. There are for sale by owners that are going to be out there. I can help you with those. So this is the conversation, the moment to say, hey, this is how Fizbo's work. Just help me make the first phone call. Right? If you see a for sale by owner, snap a picture of the sign, You know, send me the address and I'll make a phone call. Okay, So we get to have that chat. We also then in the funnel at the top, there's new construction. Right Again, depending on your market and new area. And then we explain how does new construction work? Like if you find new construction, make sure I'm with you or check in with you the first time you go look at it. Otherwise, they might not allow you to have your own representation, Okay, which happens in some marketplaces. So we have all the conversation about where you might find houses, whether it's Zillow for sale by owner, Craigslist, if anybody still uses that kind of a thing. Your neighbor mentions that they're thinking about selling, right? Or a buddy, right? So anytime as your ninja realtor, I can help you with any house in the market. And here's why inventory is still, there's a lot of it. It's just not sitting. So we get to set all those expectations up front. Don't miss anything. Awesome. Okay. So moving on to the next buyer fear then, right? This is where I set a boundary for time. So before we get to that fear, I say, there's a lot of homes. You're going to look at hundreds online. I'm going to ask you to drive by dozens. I want you to see if you'd even like the neighborhood. So now I'm giving them permission to go drive by to say, do I even like this place before I call up James and say, can I go look at it? Can you set up a showing? Say, you're even going to get out and try to peek through the windows of some. Okay, just make sure it's vacant because people don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's constant across all markets, by the way. That's not just for Collins. Yeah, yeah, people don't like that. And that's also where I can say you're going to walk through some. And so if you see open houses, even if they're under contract, go walk through them, you know, and I'll explain how that works. Just Here's a bunch of my cards. Give it to the person on staff there, right? Or just say I'm working with James and it becomes more about the house instead of them trying to pick you up as a client. So I'm able to give them permission on all the different ways they're allowed to go look at houses or they can go look at houses with me still being their guide. And it now starts to buy me a little bit more time until they really see something they want to get into. Huge time saver. Huge time saver. I think this is probably one of the most important parts too, because now you're also can go into conversations about your time, how you set appointments, the weekly customer service call even maybe at this point as well, right? Absolutely. All of those things get piled into this. Yep. Then we get into the rolling top three. 
we explain the filters and I'm going to say, Hey, at the end of this, we're going to get your filters, which is the, what we get from the two pieces of paper exercise, the what and the why's. And then, so that's how it works. We're going to set up your search, but Hey, we've got your rolling top three. Say you're going to like this property. We're going to potentially even put an offer on it. But if you don't get it, cause somebody's got cash or offers like a hundred thousand dollars over asking with cash, you might not be able to compete with that. That's their house. Good news. There's one less person you're competing with for the next place. Okay. And you know what? Law of Attraction says it wasn't your house. So let's not get too tied up if some, if it was somebody else's house. So I'm also giving them permission to not take it personally or get too offended, or, you know, to be more strong in this process because it requires that. Once you figure out the rolling top three, though, also, James, the nice thing that I've found when I was selling and I've watched people do it is that it's fun to sit in the car with somebody when you're looking at property and, and that have to have them say, okay, where does this fit in? Is this number one, two, or three in your rolling top three? If there are even that many homes that they're finding out here right now, but it's always fun when they have to eliminate one. Like, it's okay. It's like, you got three here already. Which one goes away? And this sets the stage to be able to, at the end of that, be able to say, okay, do we want to write an offer on number one here? You've labeled this as number one. But if you don't have the rolling three set up through the funnel process, now you're just looking at homes. Yep. So again, we're, we're helping them define and find clarity in their search. You know, I say, okay, so rolling top three, you know, you try to buy one, it doesn't work out or somebody else gets it. And I'll say, then a new house is going to pop on the market. It's going to slide straight through your filter. You're going to love it. We're going to look at it. We're going to write up an offer on it and you're going to go under contract. Okay. As you're writing that offer though, I'm going to do a CMA for you. I'm going to run the numbers on the house to see what their pricing strategy was to make sure that you don't pay too much. And in this marketplace, if it requires an over asking offer, then I'm going to let you know where the pricing strategy is. So you can feel comfortable with the top price that you are willing to pay. Okay. This is also where I bring up the conversation about appraisals. Say some things that can happen in that moment, though. We'll talk about appraisals, but I'll just really start to introduce the concept of multiple offers and what it takes to win in multiple offers, both from the contingency side and the over asking side, right there at that point. I think it's interesting the what you're willing to pay because, you know, right now we look at like what market value is. Matt and I pet peeve is realtors that say, hey, you're going to have to overpay to get a home in this marketplace. And the reality is it's not an overpaying thing. It's finding the value of what that house is worth to you. And I think that being able to you know, define, okay, this is where market value pretty much is. But again, what is this home worth to you at that moment in time is a very different conversation about where people will go to be able to be a buyer, a real buyer. This is also really crucial to helping you stay on the process side of this versus flipping over to the decision side. Because how many buyers say, well, James, uh, what should we offer? You're already setting the stage of saying, hey, I'm going to prepare this information so that you can make a decision. So when you get to that point, you're like, well, here's the information. What, you know, what do you think? What questions do you have versus, well, based on this, I think. Because once we start saying the I think, we're totally overstepping where we should be. Absolutely. Keeps us where we need to be, which is controlling the process and then controlling the decisions. Yeah. So we go through that stage and then say, okay, now that you know you write the contract, you're under contract. I write the contract for you. I handle everything on your behalf. So when it comes time to write that contract, I'm going to ask you five questions and it's going to turn into 19 pages of legalese. Great way to say that. So then we're going to go through all that information. Once you're under contract, we want to make sure though that you don't get a lemon. Okay. So how it works in Colorado, right? And so however it works in your place, fill in the blanks. But how it works in Colorado is you go under contract and then we do due diligence. Due diligence is your inspections, your appraisals, any surveys, anything to make sure that you're comfortable with the physical condition of this property. And once you go under contract, like you just did, I'm going to be sending you a list of all of my partners in inspections and HVAC, or whatever else. So this is one of the services that I provide to you once you go under contract. Now, this goes back also into some marketplaces, James, like they're having to like waive all this stuff because that's the only way you're going to be successful. And again, what I'm hearing from you is this is also the time that we would have that conversation of saying like, yeah, this is the time where we're going to try to make sure that you don't get a home that has some issues. But you may also have to be comfortable with saying, hey, we're not going to do those things if we want to be successful with buying a certain house. And the nice thing is you as the realtor have the ability of helping them decide which homes are the ones that, hey, we've got some time, we can run some of these inspections and do these things. We can include that in the offer. And there's certain homes that are just absolute cream puffs that you're like, here are your options that you have to choose now. And what do you want to do as we write this offer? But you at least you set the stage up front. Exactly. You know, I say, well, that's when we do the physical condition, you know, and 
in this market, if you're competing and this is a 10 out of 10 house for you, then you might choose to waive your inspections, but maintain your right to terminate and get your earnest money back. If you find a deal breaker, you might choose to waive your inspections altogether. You might choose to make your earnest money hard in this point and still go get your inspection. So I'm just giving them their options. So whenever it does get to that game time decision, and this is a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 house, I'm saying, okay, based on what we've already discussed about the process, would you like to do a deal breaker inspection? Right? They're like, yeah, only deal breakers on this one. And you know, let's see if I can get my earnest money back if I find one. And that's a great time to set the stage for what their options are. Awesome. And I want to throw out a couple other options here because there's a lot of different things that are being done across the country. Pre-offer inspection is an option. I know it might be hard to get that scheduled in certain marketplaces where that's not commonplace, but that's an option. You can always throw that out there as an opportunity where, hey, why don't we get an inspection before we even write this offer to make sure that you're comfortable with it. The other thing is, is that fear, if we are going to waive the inspections to get the 10 out of 10 house or the 11 out of 10 house, even in some cases, that doesn't mean that we still won't solve that fear. We can still get an inspection after the fact and make sure that whatever is wrong with the house, if there is something, we'll make sure it's handled so that when you move in or shortly after you move in, you know that you have a well-built, well-put-together home that you can live in for as long as you need to until the next life change that drives you in a different direction. You can still solve that fear in so many different ways, even if it's something that gets removed from the offer. Just want to make sure people are aware of their options. You can do anything. Get creative. I used to bring an inspector to the showings from time to time, you know, getting permission, mind you, and written permission from the listing agent. Just, hey, you take a look at the house, you know, while we're taking a look, they'll come to open houses, right? So there's definitely some options. Those are great ideas, Matt. I think around inspectors, because you will have people that'll say things like, but yeah, we, we can't even schedule. And if they're just, they're not even able to be found right now. And I've always laughed at that. I'd be like, just tell them you'll pay them double. They'll make their schedule open. Yeah, all of a sudden be like, yeah, we'll double your fee. Like, how important is it to really have an inspector there? And all of a sudden, they will reschedule their world to be like, it's worth my time. Like, I will be there. So, once we go through that last chat about inspections, then I look at them and I say, okay, so when we do this process correctly, this all works together to make sure that when you find the right house and get it under contract, that you don't lose it. Does this look like a process that you can get behind? And every client's doing like what you're doing. Nobody can see you right now, but you're both nodding. You're like, yeah, I can get behind that. Like, let's do this, you know? And then we transition from that to the, okay, now that we know the process, let's figure out which, what you want and why you want it. So then we move into the two pieces of paper exercise. There it is, right? That's the funnel process. And man, I got to believe that everybody listening to this is going, yeah, that sounds incredibly powerful and helpful for my buyers. And so if that's what you're thinking right now, start doing this. Do not discount the funnel, this crucial step within the buyer process. And the buyer process is built for a purpose to create clarity. And every step in there has a purpose. So it's not like, well, I can just remove this and everything's fine. Garrett, James, I know that we can always tell when we're on the phone with a client who's having a trouble with a buyer. We ask the question, well, did you do the buyer process? And they're like, well, yeah, kind of. And we're like, what did you miss? And we already know, right? You already know what was missed. And so and it's usually this. And so that's a great way to put it together. I love that. James, the way you started this with like, this is our time to address the four greatest fears and to basically put that on the table. Anybody who's bought a home before and has worked with a real estate agent has never had somebody sit down and explain what the process is of how we're going to find them a house. And subconsciously help them understand their four greatest fears and to remove those off the table. Like it is such a powerful piece, especially in today's marketplace. And I'll add this last piece in, which is I've noticed that this creates buyers. This helps people be effective buyers. And in this marketplace, we need people to be effective buyers. We have a lot of buyers roaming around the countryside with their real estate agents right now who are not qualified to be buyers out here right now. They don't have the right tools in their tool belt. And this is to make sure that you have somebody who can make decisions in your corner. So James, this is great. Anything else we want to add into this? Or People don't buy stuff. They don't buy anything when they're confused. Right? And so the whole buyer's process is designed to bring clarity to our client and ourselves as their ninja representative. So when people have clarity, they're going to make a decision and they're going to do it and they're going to feel great about it without remorse. And if we can have more clarity, we'll have more decisions. You'll have more closings. You'll have more successful clients, a lot more testimonials. 
and you won't have anybody trying to sell their house in the next 12 months, which might be good or bad, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. It works. TSW. Well, so to put a bow on this one, James, I want to say thank you so much for spending more time with us and going through this process. We've talked for the last, I think, two years about having you on to do this. And it just kind of caught me, it, you know, Matt and I were talking about is like, there's just such an importance in this right now. And it's probably the number one thing that's getting skipped. So thank you so much for joining us. If you want to go check us out, there's the podcast uh, community on Facebook. Please go there. If you want to learn more about ninja selling, installations coming up, mastery classes that are happening, coaching, you can find all of that on the bulletin board on the podcast, or you can go to ninjaselling.com and you can find it there. Please come and join us again. We love all of you. We appreciate all of you. Thank you, James. Thank you, Matt. Have an amazing day. Thank you, James. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, Garrett. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.